Then you did, I think you did a video, but we just, yeah, then did. you did the video yeah, yeah. on Rihanna, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that dude, who, who, who's that? That's, uh, that's, uh, what's his name, ASAP Rocky? ASAP Rocky. I mean, they, that, 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 that's a turn off right there, man. Big First time. of all, you gotta wear the black dress with the legs. Yeah. You got the legs. What scripture come to mind? Uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 47. 47. Yeah, oh, right, 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 right. And you got him holding the baby, so a picture, this, the saying is a picture speaks a, a thousand words, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So what do they say in the picture? Yeah. That she's running shit, right. right? And I got a baby, but he's gonna take care of that little baby. He's yeah. handpicked. And then, then she, right, right. And she got him holding the hand. So his, right. this yeah. guy's a real piece she's, of work. She's right? pulling him. She's pulling she's him, right? She's pulling him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I see, I seen that. Yeah. Yeah. And then the baby, he's carrying the baby on his, like on his breast, like he got, he got yeah. the tennis. Like the baby sucking on his breast. She got the, the bra, you know? Yeah, in other words, it wasn't nothing that they came up with. It was right. The, the elite behind him said, okay, we're going to do it this way. You're going to wear black. Right. You're going to have a slit in your, on your dress, which means what? I'm available. Right, right. I'm available, you know? And that thing went all the way up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we don't know why. Mm. But I bet you it's for good reason. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I bet you she did some stupid shit. Mm -hmm. She probably, he probably drive the car. Women do that. You drive the car, you don't listen to them. They'll try to, put, they'll try to grab the wheel. Then you got to, mm -hmm. then you just lose it. Double on the city apostles and others of great millstone who rule well. Shalom and salutation to you brothers out here pushing words of truth and sincerity. Shalom to all the elect. I came out here in the Akwa. Shalom. Yeah, the apostle Tahar was right in the um, amongst the brotherhoods doing videos on this image right here and how derogatory this is where the Israelite woman Rihanna is leading uh, her man or her baby father carrying the baby behind him you know that's just derogatory in nature according to the scriptures scriptures are very plain about being a man job 38 and 3 gird up your loins now uh gird up thy loins like a man for i will demand of thee and answer thou me see there's no toxic masculinity in the ancient world we were just supposed to be men learn how to be men carry ourselves as men isaiah 46 and 8 remember this and show yourselves men Bring it again to mind, O you transgressors. And I'm probably sure the way to show yourself a man is, as you can see here, to show masculinity. Okay, champion, a great man. Act in a manly way. So you can't get around it. You have to have masculinity in order to be a man of the Lord, for that matter. And what he was doing in this image is the opposite of masculinity. You're supposed to be leading your wife. First Corinthians 11 and 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man, every man is Yahweh Shah. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Yahweh Shah is Yahweh. So there is hierarchy and order amongst the genders. The man is the head of the woman. Now going back into what we have here. First Maccabees 2 and 64. Wherefore, ye my sons, be valiant, and show yourselves men in the behalf of the law, for by it ye shall obtain glory. Okay? And this is what a father uh, is telling his sons. So that's what we have to remember to be as men. Show ourselves as men. Be valiant. And what's valiant? It's not what you find what ASAP is doing. Possessing or showing courage or determination. Okay? And showing yourself men has everything to do with masculinity and acting like a man does. First Corinthians 13, 11, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things, all right? So there's recommendations for putting away your childlike actions when you become a man, all right? Testosterone, masculinity, it's acting like a man, it's all part of manhood. 1 Corinthians 14 and 20. Now what happens in Israel, exactly, real quick, is that we go through these phases because we don't have the father in the house. We go through these uh, unruly, uh, untempered phases, emotional uh, messes that you find amongst the children, especially the boys and the men of Israel. They're in their second childhood. They never really grow up. All right, They never allow to come into manhood. There's no coming to... Uh, man's story. There's no coming of age, right? 
there's no transition between when they stop being a boy a uh, child and become a man because most of most of these men are being raised by mothers and there is no limitation she's always going to treat you like her little boy or her little her little man okay but that's contrary to how we're supposed to do and what's actually a part of our nature to do is become masculine become manly first corinthians 14 20 brethren be not under children be children be not children in understanding so when it comes to understanding you have to know what's understanding it says uh, the mind cognitive faculties all right the mind's cognitive faculties, the faculty perceiving and judging. So your judgment and your perception has to be manly, keen, not childlike. All right. To be children means to be um, uh, of an infant. Uh, it says here a metaphor, children in intellect. So in, in your intelligence, you're still a child, but your body of a man, that's a no, no. How be it in malice, be children. Yet when it comes to malice, maliciousness, evil, trouble and wickedness, you should be like a child, innocent, pure, but in understanding, be man. So everywhere you go, First Corinthians 16 and 13, watch ye stand fast in the faith, right? To stand fast is what? To keep one standing, to persevere and persist, right? Which takes masculinity, which takes an effort, all right? To fight against the world in your, in your faith, in your fight for faith. Quit you like men, all right? To quit like men. Or to make brave, to show oneself as a man, to be brave. All right, be strong. So you don't, we don't get the time to uh, start acting like this. We don't have the time. We don't have the luxury. All right, to act like this. Of the rest of the men. All right, not 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 to say that he has the luxury to do this, but he is married to a billionaire. Right. So in his mind, in his rudimentary childlike mind, he could be a child forever. Because his wife is a billionaire. But at what cost? Now the elites is using you to be the a beacon of hope for all the soy boys out there. That all they got to do is get wifed up by a chick that's making more money. And let her lead the way. And give up your crown. And give up the authority that the Heavenly Father saw fit to give you. Alright? Again, 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Yahweh and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Yahweh Shah is Yahweh. And this is one of them least quoted scriptures when it comes to the nigga woman preacher, when it comes to the nigga woman pastor, when it comes to your grandma and all of the scriptures that she ever quote. She'll never quote these scriptures. Wonder why? Because it puts her underneath in subjection. Her and every else one of the feminine uh, women or the, uh, you know, the females in the household under subjection of all the men. Now, the reason Esau is doing all of this is very simple. It's a very simple to Esau, Edom. We know that he's Satan on earth, okay? The physical manifestation of the devil, and he's an infestation of the devil. But when you check out the world population growth, you'll see it's been steadily declining since 1970s, right? The annual change in percentage, right? But as I, was, I stumbled upon some interesting articles here, that I'm going to bring out. And obviously they say world population to reach 8 billion by November 15th. That's happened. So the population of Earth is clearly over 8 billion people right now. Right. But to these elites, it's all about uh, depopulation right now. How do they depopulate the world? Well, let's find out. As you scroll down, if I ever get to the bottom here. <laughs> Jeez. Um... Let's just go into the articles because at the bottom of this, it was supposed to give me a few pop ups, but it didn't on this one. Either way, what came up first was the way to depopulate or sustain sustainable development articles. OK, this is one by Population Matters, but I'm going to start with this one called Positive Down News. This is all about sustaining uh, population. OK, now let's read on. Five possible solutions to overpopulation. If population growth is unsustainable, are there human, humane ways to limit it? Check that out. They want to humanely limit population. Okay? That's where we're coming to. A time when your oppressor, the one ruling over you, 
is saying that there's too much popular there's an overpopulation problem. And guess who who the problem is now? You, the population. How do you limit it? Let's continue. Empower women. What's the first and most notable way to you know, because what's the key here? The key is we have to sustain the population growth. There's overpopulation. The number one way is to empower women. You can't make that up. Studies show that women with access to reproductive health services find it easier to break out of poverty, while those who work are more likely to use birth control. The United Nations Population Fund aims to tackle both issues at once, running micro credit projects to turn young women into advocates for reproductive health blah 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 you know what the bottom line is when they quote unquote empower women get out of here satan what is this when they empower women all right they're empowering the the women to um get abortions they're empowering the women to act like whores and not settle down and be wives and family family women raising children they're empowering women to go get jobs and not be at home rearing up the next generation of children. They're empowering women to um, go ahead and, and take career jobs and not have children and not get pregnant. All right. That's the number one way to sustainable development or solution to overpopulation is to empower women. Hence, you got pictures like this. It's all for sustainable development. The average woman out here is misled to think that, well, it's women's time to rise. No, this is an elite plan for to combat what they call overpopulation. Here's a different article. Although population growth in the 20s and the 21st century has skyrocketed, it can be slowed, stopped, and reversed through actions which embrace global Justice improve people's lives. You see what the deal is here? It's called sustainable reproduction and global population. All right? They want to stop y'all from reproducing. That's the issue. And what happens here? What's the first? You named it. Try to guess what the first one is. The first way they can bring birth rates down, fertility rates down, so forth and so on. Number one. Who would have guessed? Empowering women and girls. Where women and girls are empowered to choose what happens to their bodies. Right? Not what the Lord said. He said the the body of the woman belongs to her husband. The husband's body of the husband belongs to uh, her. Right? In the case of being married. But now it's called her body. It said... To their bodies and lives, fertility rates plummet. So when you give them abortion rights, it plummets. When you give them the power to uh, not get knocked up, uh, fertility rates plummets. Then the Lord said, be fruitful and multiply. I digress. Let's keep going. Empower- empowerment means freedom to pursue education and career. That's one. Get them out, from the- get them out the house. Economic independence. That's two. I don't need no men. Three, easy access to sexual and reproductive health care, meaning I could kill this baby at any time. Four, ending horrific injustices like child marriage and gender-based. But hold on. It's now proof that um, um, women in the ancient world married earlier, much earlier, right? And always, usually after puberty, was because you couldn't have children before that at that time, right? And whatever they want to discuss that hurts their feelings, we don't care. The scriptures is very plain. A woman becomes mature. A girl becomes a woman after puberty. That is the basis of when she can now um, begin to have children. From that point on, if the scriptures tell you if she um, if she marries or whatnot, if she has sex. She is not, um, she is not, let me get it. First Corinthians 1, I'm going to start at 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, his own wife, 
Let every woman have her own husband. So they belong together, two as one, right? Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife to the husband, meaning they have to deal with each other sexually. That's why they got together, right? To avoid fornication, they stay together. The wife have not power over her own body, which defeats that purpose of my body, my choice. But the husband, and also, also the husband have not power over his own body, but the wife. So they can't tell each other, well, I ain't feeling like having sex. That's not the reason y'all got together. Defraud ye not one another, except to be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again, that Satan tempts you not for your incon incontinency. So you ain't supposed to stay away apart sexually for too long, because that's the reason y'all got together. So y'all, because it was staying from fornicating and basically um, having, you know, sleeping around with everybody else's wife or you know, causing the committing adultery or the woman becoming a whore. But I speak with this permission and knock of commandment, but I'd rather that all men are by myself, all right? Um, verse 8 and 9. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, this begins, this is dealing with the children, uh, the, the um, girls. This is dealing with women. This is dealing with women, okay, of marriageable ages, unmarried and widows. Women of marriageable ages, it is good for them if they abide even as I, which is, is good if you abstain from having sex at all. Okay, if you could just abstain, abstain from having sex at all, it's good for that because now you can serve the Lord just better. But now it says, but if they cannot contain, meaning if you know within yourself that you need a man's rod to penetrate you, and if you... You know, just like the man would know if he needs to penetrate something. If you know that you're not going to be able to sustain without it, it says let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. So ultimately what happens is, as it goes down, it talks about a father um, having a jurisdiction over his daughter and keeping her pure. And if it's in his, if it's possible for him to keep her, him, her pure, um, you can do that. But check verse... Um, 27, art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Meaning you got a wife, don't seek a separation. Art thou loose from a wife? Seek not a wife. Meaning you don't have one, don't seek one. It's that simple. Stay where you at, be content. All right? It says verse 28, but, but and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. So there it is. If a virgin marry... You know what a virgin is, a young woman, but also a young woman of marriageable age. Not young enough where she isn't of a marriageable age. The marriageable age from the beginning of time has been a lot earlier than what it is today.